Last year, more than 100 women were killed and at least 133,000 experienced violence at the hands of a partner. And they're just the ones who report it. Today in Brisbane, the Prime Minister and State Premiers held a summit on what more could be done to prevent vi violence in the first place and provide better support. Shortly, I'll speak with domestic violence campaigner Rosie Batty, but first, here's our political correspondent, Sabra Lane. The murder of Luke Batty by his own father after cricket practice in early 2014 galvanised politicians and community leaders to talk about domestic violence, admitting it was a stain on Australia's soul. A coroner's inquiry found no one could have foreseen the death of the 11-year-old, but it sparked a royal commission into family violence in Victoria and nationally prodded federal and state governments into action. Today, they gathered in Brisbane for a summit. If violence against women is trivialised with phrases like boys will be boys, or the question is asked, what did she do to deserve it? We are complicit. All governments, along with interest groups, are reviewing a report into domestic violence and policies to better help victims and force perpetrators to be more accountable for their behaviour. There's also a strong focus on Indigenous communities. It's critical that Indigenous voices inform our policy responses. As we grapple with the shocking reality that Indigenous women are 34 times more likely to be impacted by family violence. I think we've neglected this um, for a long time and, and I think there is also the tendency to talk about it a lot, a lot, to acknowledge some of the horrific statistics in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities, but also to put it in the too hard basket. Domestic violence, violence against women. When Mr Turnbull became Prime Minister, he described domestic violence as a national disgrace. Today he admitted the task is mountain high because it's been ignored for too long. We have not paid the attention to this issue that we should have in years past. That's the truth. Family violence to me was just this thing on the TV that I could switch off before, and now I can't. Domestic violence has ripped Michael Costigan's family apart. He says change has to happen to stop more lives being lost. Last year, his niece Tara was brutally murdered by her partner just a week after she'd given birth to their daughter. Every time I trigger my phone, there was a picture of Tara and her three kids immediately after she'd been given birth. And so that's my motivation. And my motivation, I can, nothing can bring Tara back. I'm doing this so that your children can avoid what happened to Tara and what is happening to our family. We are gathered here today for you. He says while critics might deride today's summit as a talk fest, the fact it is happening is significant. We talk about it. It's, it's, we're not afraid to talk about this stuff. It's a little bit like mental health 20 years ago. Now we're here with family violence. Now we're talking about it. It's out there, it's okay. And there's lots of people who are clearly here today who are, who are committed to that. The Prime Minister revealed today how $100 million set aside in the May budget will be spent. $20 million will go to prevention programs, $25 million to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities, $30 million for frontline legal services and $10 million to respond to so-called revenge porn and online abuse. Millions have already been spent on advertising campaigns. Violence against women starts with disrespect. And that is starting to have an impact, according to one Premier. What that means is more women and now reporting domestic and family violence. We also have to acknowledge that, it, that this is a journey and this is not just let's come here and do this. Uh, there is so much more to do. There's a fair degree of support for us to continue the discussion around uh, standardised leave in the national employment uh, standards, uh, our courts working better together, child protection working better together. Victoria is leading the push for family violence leave, but the federal government hasn't embraced it. The peak union body, the ACTU, is funding a test case before the Fair Work Commission, saying 10 days paid leave should be a workplace entitlement. Business groups disagree. A decision will be made next year. 
Those at the coalface can't understand why there is any debate. I think this is a no-brainer. I think it's a really simple way um, of actually going forward and saying we prioritise this, uh, you know, not just in the service system, um, not just in terms of talking about um, long-term prevention and early inter intervention responses, but within our workplaces we have a real opportunity um, to send out a very clear message. Legal support groups are also pushing to ban perpetrators from cross-examining victims in court, saying governments need to set aside millions more to ensure legal representation for all sides. It's such a problem because of how traumatising it is for a victim to have to face her perpetrator. Um, it's also a problem because it enables perpetrators to actually continue abuse rather than intervening. Um, and finally, the really, one of the really crucial issues to understand is that it can really compromise the evidence a victim of violence is able to to provide under those circumstances. Is there something yeah. there that could be fixed here? And the campaigning trio is adamant change can't come quickly enough. And from the Prime Minister down, leaders insist there is political will. I believe there is a complete unity ticket across politics and across jurisdictions on this. And I, 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 I think this issue is beyond politics, frankly.